Thank you so much for joining us for another edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jacks Miller, and as always, a very special welcome to our viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. So, since Monday, taxi drivers have been protesting some of the provisions of the soon-to-pass, soon-to-be-passed Road Traffic Act, which has been years in the making. Now, is this only about lawless taxi drivers not wanting public order imposed, or is it that they're overreacting, or is it that they're actually real concerns, not just for taxi drivers, but for motorists in general? Want to talk about some of those issues on this evening's program. With us in studio, we have Senior Superintendent of Police, Calvin Allen, who is in charge of the traffic section of the police. We also have with us a Managing Director of the Transport Authority, Cecil Morgan. Louis Barton also with us. He's president of JATO, the Jamaica Association of Transport Owners and Operators. And Clive Bollings, attorney at law and host of RJR's Hotline, rounds out our panel. Before we start talk, though, let's look at this overview. Corporate air traffic woes are not why these taxi operators are at a standstill. No, it's voluntary standstill. They're upset about new fines under the new Road Traffic Act. We understand that principle and rule must be set. And we understand that they want to get rid of corruption out of doing public taxes service. And we understand that, and that is good because you deal with the public. But you cannot try to push down something down with throat like that, Bridget. You no, know, it don't work like that. For the taxi operators, some of the fees contained in the new act represent a roadblock. Owners of, of cars, or, no, or will be required under the new law to pay the tickets for drivers. To us, that makes no sense. The corporate era protest started on Monday. By day two, operators in some parishes were protesting. Here are some of the fines which spawned the protest. $45,000 for driving without being the owner of a driver's license or permit. $20,000 for driving without insurance, 24 for not obeying a traffic light, 12,000 for failure to stop at a pedestrian crossing, 10,000 for failure to comply with the traffic signs, and 5,000 for loud noises within silence zones and failure to wear a protective helmet. I'm not going to say all are perfect. You understand, but you have good drivers out there, treat passenger good. You understand, you have good, good and bad. Same thing with the JUTC. You understand? Because sometimes your driver come and them say you're on taxi and them stop at the bus stop. What them do? Them just drive out from you. Them don't care. You understand? So what the government do, it not make no sense. Another issue. Owners of vehicles can be fined for infractions committed with his or her vehicle even if the owner was not the driver at the time of the incident. This will only happen if the violation was captured by electronic devices which can identify the license plate with a ticket generated as a result then sent to the vehicle owner. We say no, that, that we want to put a stop to that because we as owners, we're already under pressure from the economic pressure, everything that, that we perceive that everything that, that, that is thrown at transport causes us to be digging into our pocket. The transport minister, Robert Montague, has been unrelenting about the need for the changes enforcement that has to be consistent it has to be fair and it has to be consistent again let me repeat it and we are determined that in the new way forward we are going to be like that and we have to clean up the system not only for the taxi operators but for every single user of the jamaican road and we have to do it with the sense of care and balance so that everybody gets a fair shake and when you leave home or work you have a very good chance of getting home or getting to work without this name or without the congestion or without the indiscipline on the road. A week after Parliament passed more changes to the road traffic bill to establish new offences and increased penalties, taxi operators were en route to Gordon House to deliver a letter to the Speaker of the House of Representative Pernell Charles. But even he had had it with taxi men. I must complain to you that I am fearful to drive on the road. Mm -hmm. And I have been driving for more than 60 years. And I, it's the first that I am fearful of my life, mm -hmm. of those people who are driving taxis on the road. Mm -hmm. 
they don't drive on their side of the road, mm -hmm. and they just run you off the road. With the amendment now going back to the Senate, will the legislators greenlight the changes? I am Kirk Wright for All Angles. Thank you so much for that, Kirk. And in fact, the opposition has um, suggested that they do have so, some concerns about some of the amendments recently made in the House of Representatives. Now, um, Clive Mullings, let me start with you as somebody who is not a taxi driver, I don't think, are you? No, not really. <laughs> you don't own a taxi either? No, I don't. Okay, for, just to make sure we know where we are. Now, is this just about taxi drivers being unruly or do... I was hearing you on hotline and it seemed that you actually have some questions or concerns as well. I, I do. And the Road Traffic Act really covers everyone who uses the road. And I know that the narrative has been somewhat influenced by the behavior of taxi drivers and coastal bus drivers and so on. I hold no beef for them. I'm very honest with you. But there are some concerns I have as it touches on concerns. The sections of the Road Traffic Act, which would seek to summon a driver, owner of a vehicle, utilizing the camera, where it is said that an offense may have been committed. I'll tell you what my concerns are. I've heard it said that it's just in the case you've broken a red light or so on and so forth. Once you, the camera can pick up the, the, license, the license number, then the owner can be called to account. It also touches on concerns of very serious offenses, like careless driving and reckless driving. The penalties for that could go to a maximum in some instances of $500,000 or sometimes imprisonment. And what I'm concerned about is the fact that the identification of the driver of the vehicle doesn't seem to be what is being contemplated. Either one, based on a misunderstanding of the law of privacy, or two, because they can't because vehicles are tinted. And so what could happen? Let us say that someone borrows my vehicle and he... He's friend, up, child. Friend, child, colleague, acquaintance, anybody. And they come to an infraction on the road. They, die, they drive dangerously or recklessly, and they bring the car back. Then, if the system allows, I may get a summons in the, in the, in the, in the mail saying that there is this infraction which I must answer. And then I go and I say, no, but it wasn't me. It was Calvin, my good friend. Now, Calvin, my good friend, knowing fully well the implications of what he may be visited upon him, may say, no, it's not me at all. And so it comes down to what I says again, what Calvin says, what's the Lord going to do? I say, well, it's your vehicle, it registered to you, therefore you are going to be one feel culpable and convicted for it. So what's wrong with that? Should you not be responsible for, for um, the damage or the, the havoc that whoever you lend your vehicle to is wreaking out there? No, I am responsible in terms of whether there is some liability that could accrue, could accrue by driving badly. I cannot control the actions of the individual. And I say that because of that, it's different from licensing your vehicle, which is my remit, or insuring and so on and so forth. I have no control over the individual when he's on or she's on the road. And then when they have an egregious breach, it ought not to be a situation where you can't identify the person, therefore I'm held responsible. But maybe I should stop letting out your vehicle then. Quite possibly. But the fact of the matter is, at the end of the day, fault must lie by virtue of actions done. And I think that this opens up a Pandora's box. And what I'm concerned about is that the narrative, because of the lawlessness on the roads by virtue of persons, man and large, in the public passenger sector, please may say nothing wrong with that. But you may find out at some particular juncture that you are unable to defend the position because they're going to arrest on the point that, well, it's your car, that's it. Right, I see head, head shaking over here. So, Mr. Allen, let me start with you, sir. <laughs> Thank you, madam, and good evening. I, I take counsel from counsel. You do? <laughs> yes, but I, in this instant case, I somehow disagree with uh, aspects of what uh, Sir Mullins has put forward. And so I'm agreeing with you, although it is that you ask it in the form of a question. Should the owner be held responsible for his actions? Ah, and, yes. pa and part of that action is also the lending of your vehicle. Who it is that you have seized possession of your vehicle to yes. is critical in the whole dynamics. But how far and does it go? It, it ought to go to whatever dimension. Because here it is, though. Mm -hmm that you are mentioning, the whole aspect of a particular breach that might uh, result in 
serious fines, hefty money, or, or, or confinement. And we are making the point that if you were not the person who was driving the vehicle at the time, then the law requires that you bring forward the person who was driving. We can't have an excuse that the person who you, who you know brought forward is saying that it is not them, and then it ought to relax like that. The owner has to account. And so we're... It sounds like if you can't catch Kwaki, you catch him short. No, and it's it sounds like no, but, your failure but, to be able to prosecute and, and to get the people no, who are no, doing no, the things. No, you're no, saying, this, boy, no, no this is not Kwaki one shot. We're what? talking about legitimate owner. Yes. We're talking about a, a vehicle where it, the, the, the registration number has been but, electronically but captured. Kwaki was a legitimate owner of the shot, though. Well, fine. As I said, I take counsel from counsel. <laughs> so, 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 we, so we are making the point that the vehicle has been electronically captured. Mm -hmm. the, the investigation done, it is owned by Calvin Allen. Mm -hmm. Calvin Allen has to account. So whether it is that you had lent it to John, Mary, or Jane, mm -hmm. you still have responsibility as to that. So Mullins is saying, so you have sure, to in terms of civil forward. liability, but he's saying in terms of fines and so on, he doesn't, he doesn't agree with that. But I tell you what, I'm at the break, so let me go to the break. When we come back, our other guests will weigh in on this, and of course you can as well. You can text me. It's 876-895-3999. That's 876-895-3999. Give us your first name. Give us your location. Tweet me as well, DJ Miller J A or hashtag is TVJ All Angles. Soon come.